Good morning. It is the fifth Sunday of Easter, and we gather together today in our living rooms, dining rooms, kitchens, wherever we happen to be, to celebrate God, to listen to God's word, to pray for our world and for one another. Do not let your hearts be troubled. We are not troubled. We believe in God. God's house has many dwelling places. Christ himself has gone to prepare a place for us. We will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. For us, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So let us worship God, made known to us in Christ Jesus. We say together the Jubilate. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his faithfulness endures from age to age. Let us pray. Risen Christ. Give us grace to love one another, to search for truth, and to walk in the ways of justice and peace, so that we may abide in the Father's love always. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also, and you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do and, in fact, will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If, in my name, you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Word of the Lord. I speak to you in the name of God, 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. What powerful, powerful words in our story from John's Gospel today. Let's just set a little bit of context for it first, though. Just before the beginning of our story for today, Jesus has just done a couple of very important things. He has just finished washing his disciples' feet, modeling for them self-giving love, modeling for them servanthood, showing to them what they are supposed to do, how they are supposed to live. And then, and then he gave them a commandment. He said to them, a new commandment I give you, love one another as I've loved you. People will know you are my followers if you love one another. He was telling them, making it clear that love was to be the cornerstone. Love was to be the identifiable characteristic of his kingdom movement, the identifiable characteristic for those who would follow after him. And, and, and this was not a warm, fuzzy idea. It was not a reasonable suggestion. It was a commandment. Love one another. Okay, with that done, it was time for him to move on to a private, an intimate goodbye before all the craziness began. And so, as chapter 14 begins, what we have is the beginning of Jesus' farewell discourse. The beginning of Jesus saying goodbye to his nearest and dearest friends who were about to have their hearts broken. It was Jesus giving them words to comfort them, to give them strength, and also to help them understand what was expected of them. And I believe that these words, these powerful words speak just as clearly to us today as they did to his disciples 2,000 years ago. As, as we write our own story, the story of our world and our own personal story, some amazing things are going on. As of today, over 4 million people have been affected with COVID-19. As of today, over 276,000 people have died and, and there's no end in sight. For many people in many places around the planet, it feels like death is stalking and fear is taking over. For us, as we work on our own personal story, we are affected by that. And I can only speak personally. For me, I have been around a lot of death in my life. I have buried hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. I have sat by bedsides, holding the hands of people as they breathe their last breath more times than I care to remember. I've buried family members. I've buried my daughter. And all of that takes an enormous toll, an enormous toll. And I have found, I have found incredible comfort lately in the words of a song by Brooks and Dunn. When they say, you can't tell me that this all ends in a slow ride in a hearse. No, this can't be. This can't be. This can't be all there is. I believe. Jesus said to his disciples, don't let all of this rattle you. Don't be afraid. In my father's house, there are many rooms. If it wasn't true what I have told you, that I'm going to prepare a place for you. 
it may feel like death stalks the land, but death will not have the last word, I believe. But enough of that for now, because John, like all of the gospel writers, in his writing talks about life on both sides of the grave with a special emphasis on the kingdom of God here and now. And in our reading today, we hear the words, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And if we want to get those words right, then we have to set them in the narrative of the people of Israel. Why? Because Jesus was Jewish. He wasn't an Anglican. If you thought about it, maybe, but he was Jewish. And in that narrative, starting with Moses in the Sinai, in the covenant that God made with Moses and the people of Israel, through all of the joys and sorrows, successes and failures, trials and tribulations of God's people trying to make their way in the promised land, through to the 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 anticipation, the expectation, the pleadings, and the visions of the prophets. Through it all, we get a picture of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob preparing, creating, and and nurturing a people whose purpose, whose sole purpose was to be a beacon of hope and a locus of healing for the whole world. And that's never more clear than in the fourth chapter of Micah. Now, listen to these words and listen to them in terms of the gospel that you just heard. Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall come forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem." He shall judge between many peoples and shall arbitrate between strong nations far away. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. But they shall all sit under their own vines and under their own fig trees and no one shall make them afraid for the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken it. For all the peoples will walk each in the name of its God, and we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever. All of the gospel writers to a person wanted their readers, their hearers, to get, to to, to understand, to find hope, to find strength in the proclamation that in Jesus, God's truth and the expectations of the prophets were being realized. It was happening. It, It begins with the first sentence in the first gospel that was written, the first chapter, the first verse, the first sentence of Mark's gospel. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent, put away your agenda and believe the good news of Jesus Christ. The kingdom of God, God's saving action, God's rescue operation, call it whatever you will, entered the world in Jesus. And let's be clear, Jesus didn't just teach about it. He he didn't just preach about it, he embodied it. And John makes that incredibly explicit in his famous I am sentences. Last week, week we heard Jesus say, I am the gate. I, I am the gate through which God passes through to his flock and through which his flock passes out to find abundant life and safety and to leave oppression and fear behind. And he said, I I am the good shepherd. I will heal my sheep. I will bind them up. I will tend them. I will feed them. I will feed them with justice. And today he says to his disciples, I am the way. I am the truth. 
I am the life. If peace, if real peace, not just for Israel, but for all of God's children is ever going to come, then, then you need to teach my way. You need to proclaim my way, follow in my way, live my way. If, if swords are ever going to be beaten into plowshares, then you need to believe, to proclaim, and live the truths that I have shared with you. If God's kingdom is ever going to be fully realized, if abundant life for all is, is ever going to happen, if nations are going to come together from all parts of the world to live in love and peace and harmony with one another, then my life, my death, my resurrection are key. Trust God. Trust me. And, and he said to them, know this. If you believe this, if you live this, then you're going to do greater things than I have done. You are going to finish the work that I have begun. But you don't have to do it on your own because I will be with you. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, I am the way to healing the world. Friends, listen, in the situation that we're in, in what we're facing, what we're trying to cope with, we got some choices. We can allow fear and anxiety to dominate our lives. We can curl up into a fetal position and try to pretend it's not happening. I've tried all of that and it doesn't work. Or we can listen to these words. We can claim these words. We can live these words. Jesus said, don't let all of this stuff rattle you. Don't be afraid. In my father's house, there are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? Death is not the end. Life is. I believe. I believe. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And I am with you always to the end of time. Together, we can bring hope. Together, we can bring healing to our broken world. I believe. I believe. Amen. I'm gonna hold up in that kingdom, in that good good news. I'm gonna hold up in that kingdom, in that good good news. I'm gonna lay down this world, gonna shoulder up on my cross, gonna take it home to my Jesus, in that good good news. I got a crown of things in that Take it home to my Jesus and that good, good news.
Together we affirm our faith as we say, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. God of power and might, who raised Jesus from the dead, you free our hearts from trouble and prepare a place of joy for all your children. And so we thank you for your promise and your peace, which we need so desperately these days. In Christ, we know you as the way. You deliver all who turn to you in moments of challenge or uncertainty. We pray for those who feel lost or alone those who live with great anxiety and doubt, and any who are fearful of what tomorrow might bring. God of the way, open the eyes of those who are struggling so that they can see that there is a new way filled with hope for them, with the promise of rest and renewal. In Christ, we know you as the truth. You reveal the falsehood and lies that ensnare us in these confusing times. We pray for those who have put their faith in false hope and flimsy promises, those who are deceived by the fabrications of the power hungry, and any who are misled by distortions and twisted claims that circulate each day. God of truth, reveal the shallowness of things that distract or mislead us and empower us to see what is true. In Christ, we know you as the life. You promise to overcome all that is rooted in death and decay by your resurrecting power. We pray for those who struggle with illness or grief and all who live with deep sadness, depression, or hopelessness. We pray for those whom each day seems like a chore and those for whom opportunities for abundant life are cut down by acts of discrimination or the loss of what seemed like security just weeks ago. God of all life and each life, Heal those who are suffering and make your justice known in our land. Help each of us and your whole church to follow in the footsteps of Christ, so that in our living and loving, your kingdom of justice and love is revealed. This we pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Now the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts, your minds, in the knowledge and the love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those whom you love and pray for today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen.